down. Good. Okay. Uh, like, uh, so this part is the FRQ, like the information. This is the question. So the first part just says F is differentiable. Table gives values of F and the derivative of F prime for selected points. Uh, this is important right here. Raise your hand, please. As soon as I read that F double prime is positive, I know something about F. What do I always know? If F double prime is positive, what do I always know about F? Say F is concave up. We knew it. Point two for C. No. <laughs> too easy. Okay. <laughs> Sassy is really rubbing off today. <laughs> <laughs> where I'm cheating because I've done the problem before, of course. So I remember that this is the clue I need, not this one. But in some unknown problem, I don't really know which one would be more important, honestly. So no, good call, two point. Is that what you meant? Yeah. It's perfect. Okay, part B says, write an equation of the line tangent to the graph of F. Stop right there. Every time I read that phrase, write an equation of a line tangent to the graph of F, I always do this. I do. I, I wish I could get better sound effects. Like I wish I had a sound effect. <laughs> 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 That's a good line. Did you have a second sound effect? Uh, this one I want to go. I can't do it very well because I want to whistle from low to high, but I don't have enough range. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, just, you'll just clap aggressively while I'm going to fail the test. I can't do it. <laughs> if you want to see a funny video, look up on YouTube. Victor Borgia, like he does this, uh, he's a really famous pianist. But he does a little humorous skit where he gives sound effects to uh, punctuation marks. <laughs> it's really funny. So. It's really old. It's like he made it clear back in like the 60s or 70s, but it's really well done. Look. Look out. Okay, look. Every time they say write an equation to the line, write an equation for a line tangent to a graph, you should draw this. And then you should label correctly. So hands up. What am I going to label the pink? Hands. Come on. How am I going to label the pink? The labels are crucial. If the label's wrong, the whole problem goes wrong. How do I label the pink? If you don't know, talk to somebody. You gotta get more hands. How is the pink to be labeled? Come on, hands. Adam. Please raise your hand if you agree with Adam. Points three. When she labeled the point, like the dot as one. Yes. And then the y coordinate, since it's not given, I'm going to write f of one. Because it's. Do you not want to write negative four? Uh, you could, because you can look up here and go and say, oh look, negative four. Perfect. Either way. Oh. Either way. Either way. Question. Okay, hands up, we need to label the blue line. Here's where mistakes often occur. What is the correct label? What is the correct label for the blue line? Now I've got everyone afraid to raise their hand. <laughs> Jacob. Is it F prime of one? Okay. 
Okay, hold on. I was gonna say that. That's just a I was gonna say that. He stole it. You scared me. He stole it from me. <laughs> <laughs> I whispered to him and he stole my answer. Shh, shh, shh. Do I get a ticket? Okay, look out. Look out. Look out. Okay, uh, this idea of a tangent line is really prevalent on the AP test. Like, it's on a lot of different questions. Look at me. Like, don't take your eyes off me. Like, you have to get this one right. If you mix it up, you're going to lose a lot of points, and easy points. Okay, f prime of 1 is a number. It's 5. five. This line isn't 5. Yeah. This line is a whole bunch of different points. Yeah. So that How doesn't do you work. Write that? It's not f, you can't write f prime of x because that would be wrong. Yeah, it's not f prime either. Yeah. This line is not f prime. Yeah. It's, How do you it has its own equation. The tangent line. Y equals it will be that, but like when we start out, what we write is this. Look, what you need to do is always write this. We talked about this in unit three, you've just forgotten. Okay, three points for coming. Okay, everybody, listen. You cannot think of the blue line as f prime. It's not. That prime is some completely other. It's, some, it's another graph. It's another equation. It's not that blue line. The blue line is a whole bunch of points that follow this equation. Would that um, point the dot would have No. The blue dot is f of one because it's on the graph of f. The slope right there, now this is what Nafi is talking about. The slope right here, that slope is f prime of 1, but not the line. That's why, no, you're doing fine. Listen, that's why you better be careful. There's a difference between slope of the line tangent and equation of the line tangent. The equation of the line tangent is this. The slope of that line tangent is this. So technically the whole entire line is the slope at that point. No, the line is an equation. The line, a, slope, a slope isn't a line. A slope is a number that represents how steep the line is. It has the same slope as... They have the same slope, but it's not the line. Okay. Yeah, you're doing fine, but slope and line are different. Let's go down and then... Okay. You're, good. you're good. Couldn't it also be prime of 1x. Okay. No, two points for a good thought, but it isn't. Pretty good? Please. So the slope is 5, but we're finding the equation. We're finding the equation. The slope of, like how many slopes does the curve have? Infinite. The slope of the curve at this one spot is what value? 5. five. The line is linear. It's straight, right? So the slope of the line anywhere is 5. But the equation of the line is what we are seeking. Don't mix up slope of the line with equation of the line. Is the negative 4 a y coordinate? This is the y coordinate of the pink right there. It's also the y coordinate of the blue right there. Because the blue and pink are tangent at that point. So now I can write the equation. It's just this. Like that? Can you just write minus four? Sure. Either way. They'll give you credit either way. I was kind of just emphasizing the formula, but it doesn't matter. Wait, where'd you get one from? So remember, x1, y1 is a point somewhere on the blue line. And right here on the blue line, there's a point at x equal 1, oh. y equal negative 4. Yeah, sorry. You're good. Now don't stop asking. The worst thing you can ever do when you're trying to learn is stop asking. Please. Slope is not necessarily a point, but just like a number. Slope is a number. a number. It's a point on the f prime graph. It's a y coordinate on the f prime graph. But in this picture, slope isn't a point. Slope is just a value. Okay. Two points. He's been asked before, but the reason the reason we know that the slope of the blue line is five because at x equals one, where it is tangent, 
the derivative of f is five. Perfect. Because this table is saying, here's x equal one, here's f prime. The table is saying f prime when x is one has a value of five, which means, back to what Nafi said, on the graph of f prime when x is one, the y coordinate will be five. But on this graph of f when x is one, the slope is five. So we've done the first part. Get used to FRQs. They'll give you information. They'll ask a question, and then they'll either put a comma or a period. You need to stop there. Don't keep reading. Like, you're trying to get 60 points. You're not trying to do everything. You're trying to get 60 points. So when you get to here, stop. Like, do what they ask. Don't worry about the rest yet. So I've collected a point so far. Okay, look up, lost Shim. Now he's back. Okay, it's all right. When you're sleepy, you're sleepy. I've been in many situations where I fought as hard as I could and I could not stay awake. So, read the name. There we go. Hadley, raise your hand. She's right there. Thank you. Yeah, it's just too small. Thank you. Very good. Okay, look up. Okay, here's why it's so important that you notice that this is an equation. It's not a number, it's not a, it's, just, it's an equation. This is how we find all of the xy pairs along the blue, any of them. You must understand that idea to get the next part of the question right. The next part says, use this line, which means, use this equation to approximate the value of f of 1.2. Okay, we drew, we drew on the board right here f of 1. Raise your hand if you, I'm not going to ask you to come to the board, but I want to know who can do it. Raise your hand if you could come to the board and draw what f of 1.2 would look like. This is what f of 1 looks like, about, the general idea. This dot right here, this dot, this dot is at one comma f of one. We got to know how to draw f of 1.2. How is that drawn? Read. Perfect. So I'm going to pretend that we're zoomed way in, so things are kind of spread out. I'm going to put the dot right here, just so it's easy to see. So this dot on the pink line. That dot is located at precisely x equal 1.2, and the y coordinate at that spot would be f of 1.2. So who had their hand raised and was prepared to say that? 2.3 for brief. Anyone want to talk more about that? Please. Uh, you're thinking perfectly. What we're going to do is use this equation to try and approximate this value. Oh, so you just going to use like 1.2 as your x value in the Perfect. Three points. Three, three points. <laughs> uh, stay with me, man. Oh, you can Wait, but the uh, orange formula, isn't that the formula for the slope of the blue line? So not the slope, not the slope, the, the equation of the blue line. So how can we use it to find a different point? Stay with me and you'll have it. Yeah. So you're going to keep talking, everyone's going to listen to what Ethan said. Right. Okay, this point has a y coordinate. That y value is called f of 1.2, good? Yeah. We're supposed to approximate this y coordinate. What Amanda noticed is this y coordinate is close, so it's a decent approximation. Okay. Yeah. What's the x coordinate of the blue, Ethan? Uh, 1.2. 1.2. I tried. I deliberately drew the blue dot directly above the pink. Yeah. So the x coordinate is 1.2. The y coordinate is negative. How do you find 
that y coordinate of the blue. Because this equation is for finding all of these x, y pairs. So I come over here and I write y of 1.2 is going to equal 5 times of the x value is 1.2. I'm not, I gotta look this up. I'm not sure. I'm comfortable with this notation, but I gotta verify that the AP people are as well. So just call that y equal. Minus one. Yeah, I don't want to call it f because f is a different thing in this problem. Okay. Could we use like a y sub one or something? Um, I'm not sure. I gotta look it up. I'm pretty confident this we'll look in the back in a second. Jacob? So should we use like an Oh, thank you. I like that. Well, actually, got a new idea. I like that, actually. This is the best way. I didn't even think of it. Two points for Jacob. Two for Bree. I should have thought of that. We want to write f of 1.2 is approximately. That's a really good way to write it. And then you can just box this and stop because you don't have to do any arithmetic. Question. So we found this y coordinate. Okay. We found this y. Somebody did it on their calculator or something? It was negative three. Negative three. I'm pretty sure it was one minus four. Yeah. You don't have to do that, of course, but totally fine. So this y coordinate's negative three. It's close to this y coordinate. That's why it's an approximation. Okay, that's why I said to uh, Jack at the beginning of the class. To me, today's discussion is not difficult. You just have to talk enough about it, and then I'm hoping that you go, "Oh, this really does feel like I can understand. I won't have a hard time remembering." So, very good. Awesome question. Hold on. In any problem, when they say approximate, the part they never tell you in like a school setting is, well, how good is the approximation? It all depends on how sharp the curve is. If the curve is really like not curved very much, then the tangent line will look a lot like the curve. And so the approximation will be a good one. If the curve is really sharp, the approximation isn't very good. But they're not testing you on that. So you don't really care. But the question is totally valid in a real life situation. Like how good is this approximation going to be? Does that make sense? Perfect. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Last part of the question. Is the approximation greater or less than the actual value? Less. Greater the approximation. The approximation. Looking at this picture, oh, I'm not saying we're, okay, look at me, look at oh, every look here, every look here, every look here. For the picture or for the actual thing? You're thinking yeah. really well. <laughs> Just stay with me for a second, but you've got it. Based on this picture, is the approximation greater or less than the actual? Greater. Louder? Greater. 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 What Jackie noticed is my picture's wrong. Because F is concave up. So it's actually like the curve with the line underneath mm -hmm. Dang good line. Um, You're having a good line day. Thank you. <laughs> That's a good line day. <laughs> so how do you give the reason? Yeah, the reason turns out, okay, this is kind of like uh, actually Nicolette's question, like, well, approximation, right? How good is that? They don't really care. So the answer they want is really simple. They don't expect a lot of words. All you have to say is, since, here we go. Since F is concave up, and you can abbreviate concave up, the approximation, you can abbreviate <laughs> the approximation as well. So just approximation. There you go, that's what I was trying to say. Since F is concave up, the approximation is 
less than f of 1.2. That is sufficient to earn the point. This problem is worth three, I believe. Look in the back. Somebody confirm? So in this case, with this picture, it is greater than just because the picture is concave up. With the other picture, it's less. Yeah, I, I just have a habit of always drawing this. If you read that initially, could you just draw the other like, one? Yep. Probably the habit I should develop is to say, oh, be a little more careful as I'm reading so I know which way to draw. So. Um, I'm just wondering, so why do we find the approximation? I'm just wondering if there's a way to figure out the equation of that. Oh, based on what they've given us, there isn't. Uh, um, somebody this morning asked the same question. They were really polite about it. They're like, this is going to sound rude. <laughs> and I said, well, you can't be rude. You're way too polite, because she is. And it's actually, who was in your class? Emma said, wait. Um, right? She was in this class yeah. right now. Emma said, oh, this is going to sound rude. And I said, no, it's not. I said, but what I reply is going to sound rude as well. <laughs> we just do what they tell us to do, because it's just a test question. <laughs> but to answer Dan's question, uh, maybe this will help. I don't know. In a real life situation, uh, in my previous profession, this idea is real. The idea of approximating a curve with a tangent line. All of you have actually experienced this reality. Uh, raise your hand, please, if you have ever had any audio device, something that produces sound, and you turn the volume all the way up, and you notice that it is loud, but it's also kind of distorted. It's not as clean as it was if you turn it back down a little bit. I mean, I've heard that this, I've heard the sound just is not as good when it's full volume versus back off a little bit. Okay, two points for participating. Listen, okay, what's happening? What I said to Nicolette. If the curve is nice and broad and you stay close to this point, the line tangent is actually a good approximation of the curve. When they build audio amplifiers, okay, they are using this concept. It's what some electrical engineers do, they build audio amplifiers. If you get too far away, you turn the volume up too loud, the approximation starts to get worse and worse. And that's when it starts to sound bad. As long as the volume's not too loud, it's a good approximation. So I don't know if that helps or not. But. So it's kind of like when you take a picture on my It really is roughly, it's, not, it's a different reason, but it is a good analogy. I like that a lot. That like you just get too far away from the original. No, they gave me a clue. Danica's chart. Yeah, if F double prime is positive, I look over there, then I know F is concave up. No. Good question. So what I have found is that they don't seem to ask this. Okay, one thing they will ask every year, multiple times, is questions about lines that are tangent. That's going to show up multiple times. This question about finding the approximation usually shows up once. This question about is the approximation greater or less seems to show up about once every other year. So it's not real common, but what they have always done is given some sort of clue like this. So you can determine the concavity. Yeah. They may not give this exact clue, they give something so you can determine the concavity. Points? Yeah. Next one. <coughs> 